Hi everybody, Fox Nomad here and today I want to help you travel smarter by showing you some of the best places to eat here in Phnom Penh, Cambodia. Today I'm going to show you Cambodia's breakfast fishball soup, a traditional bean dessert, a restricted art facility that makes amazing coffee, and the one restaurant in Phnom Penh that you have to visit, and visit, and visit, over and over again. These are the best places to eat in Phnom Penh. So we're starting out our day with breakfast here at Malis, which is a Cambodian restaurant that's sort of a fine dining experience. It's in a quieter part of the city, there's a courtyard here, and it's very well known for its breakfast, but also for lunch and dinner, but it opens up very early. So if you wanna get here before a tour or before you're leaving the city around 6.30 in the morning, you can do that and have breakfast. All right, so we've got our first main course here, which is a fish ball soup. This is very common here in Cambodia and Phnom Penh. You get a lot of seafood, a lot of fish broth, a lot of fish sauce, and a lot of seafood coming out of the river. So one thing that's very popular is to take a mix of the fish coming out of the Mekong and make them into these little balls here. Mmm. Mmm. It doesn't have a very fishy taste. It's a little bit sort of um, almost like gelatiny. So it has kind of like a, a texture, sort of like chewy. That I would say it's very chewy, but. It doesn't really taste like fish, it tastes more like a meatball actually. And it is spicy, there's a strong black pepper spice in there, so you get, a, get this kick sort of, but it's a black pepper, not really a red pepper, something also that you see pretty commonly here. And it comes with these rice noodles. Cooking in this broth along with some vegetables like carrots, we've got our bean sprouts, also some green onion and shallots in there as well so let's try some of this broth first before we get into the noodles the thing you notice the most is the black pepper taste it doesn't have a very fishy taste to it salty black pepper kind of nice thing to get you warm and sort of sweating cool off in this hot weather i've also got a iced ginger tea here which doesn't look like it has anything in it very clear but oh that's nice nice fresh ginger in here in the pot boiled and cooled down with ice and uh, really refreshing it's just hard to describe how hot and humid it is here especially right now it's the hot season so you're gonna be hot you're gonna be sweaty and one of the best ways to combat that is through cold and hot and these kind of noodles are very popular here in the morning Cambodians eat a lot of seafood and they eat a lot of noodles, a lot of noodles and broths in the morning, very common. Those noodles are so soft, so well cooked, and just so smooth. Like, look at them, they barely keep that on the chopstick. Might be some of the best noodles I've had here in Phnom Penh. And now you can take some of these bean sprouts, take those little extra bean sprouts, and just dump that right here onto the soup. Then what you do is you mix that in broth you get a little bit more crunch a little bit more crunch from the fresh bean sprouts all right so clearly this is more of your Western style food but I just wanted to try some eggs and see what they could do and these look so perfectly cooked I can't wait to cut into these eggs right, let's take this little bad boy see how well it's poached and oh yeah look at that yolk oh that's that's gonna be really nice the whites are so and then the inside so creamy. I told you this is the place to get breakfast. This is one of the nicer places in town. But the price is also very reasonable. So that noodle soup, for example, was $5. Poached eggs is about $4. So you can get this entire meal for about $10. This fine dining place like Malas here in Phnom Penh. Now, if I'm comparing this to another fine dining restaurant here in the city, Wat Tam Nak, I would say they're both very good, but just very different. So the portions here at Malas are much bigger and the menu is more traditional. So you've got more broths, more sort of common foods, more noodles. So a lot of the things aren't kind of changed or made into a French style. They're served as you would get, you know, just on the street or at home, just a little bit fancier. Also, Wat Tam Nak has a very different style of serving the food. So it's in courses and you get this sort of small fine dining kind of flavor balls but if you're really hungry you want to come to Malice because you just get larger portions the prices are about the same at both places it's just sort of a different type of serving style Wat Tam Nak also has limited hours so during lunch and during dinner it's closed in the afternoon whereas Malice is open from 6 30 in the morning until about 10 p.m at night 
so you've got a wider range of time to come here. So in short, both places are fine dining, but just a little bit different. And I recommend that you come to both of them because it is a very nice experience. Here at Malice, you get Khmer foods, you get a more traditional look at the foods, more traditional look at the flavors, and a more traditional look at the style. Whereas at Wat Tam Nak, you get a more creative look at the food. The portions aren't quite as big, but the flavors are filling and it's just an overall nice experience over there as well. All right, so I was just brought something. I don't know what it is. I think it's dessert, maybe? I said it was red beans, so I'm really curious if this is sweet or not. The bowl is cool, so I don't think it's a hot dish. Yeah, so it's like kidney beans, very small little kidney beans that have been cooked. They're kind of like uh, mushy with tapioca in here. And you can see the balls of tapioca in there. It kind of looks just like it's all beans, but then if you take some of these out, these little clear balls of tapioca, which is essentially kind of like almost like a sweet jello, not super sweet, just a little bit of a, a sweet jello flavor mixed in the red beans, and that gives it this nutty flavor. It's a very unique taste, but it's sort of a dessert after breakfast and uh, very uh, traditional here. All right, so I'm just gonna finish up my ginger tea and then I wanna take you to a cafe where we get some coffee, maybe some more food and just show you another part of Pen on Pen. No. 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 Uh, go and sup. Yeah, Yes. Okay. Sup. Sup. Yeah, hot all right, so this is Feel Good Coffee, which is in this factory area, and it's a little bit weird. They don't want you to take videos here. I mean, if you take it with your phone, it should be okay, but when I showed up with my camera, they didn't want me to film. They said it was all right with the phone. I've got a smaller camera here, and I had to get a media pass, because apparently it costs about $500 a day to film here commercially. There are some office spaces here, as well as some co-working and other living spaces here. That's what it's known for. It's sort of this urban planning kind of center, but it's also got a pretty good coffee shop, I'm told. So it's a nice place to come here to have some coffee and to walk around and to see some nice artwork. There's some beautiful artwork here on the walls. In fact, if I just show you there, you can see some of it outside. None of this space is air conditioned. It's actually all in this warehouse. You can kind of see how the, the factory here, it's cool in here, it's nice. It's got a lot of fans going, uh, but people have said that during the hotter parts of the day it can get quite warm in here but it's just a nice area oh thank you so much all right so we got my Cambodian Khmer coffee with condensed milk now Cambodia may not be known for its coffee but coffee is very popular here they're trying to cultivate some of their own beans a lot of it is imported from nearby Vietnam and the condensed milk that comes from the French influence is so good the coffee here has so much flavor so much mocha taste this is sweet with the condensed milk in it, but cold, very refreshing, just a really nice cup of coffee, really nice area, you can see just sort of around me, has a great place, like if you're here to work, if you want to bring a laptop, or if you just want to hang out, this is a really nice place, sort of a little bit far out from Malice, so the best way to get here is with a tuk-tuk or with a car using a grab app or something like that, there's a lot of empty space here, a lot of couches, a lot of places to put down a laptop and a lot of outdoor areas to walk around. So let me finish my coffee and see if I can show you some of these outdoor areas and some of the artwork to give you an idea of what the space is like here. So Feel Good Coffee is pretty well known here in Phnom Penh because they source a lot of their beans from local farmers and a lot of the cafes here will actually get their beans from Feel Good Coffee. So they'll get their beans from here and if you're at another cafe, chances are some of the beans were sourced from Feel Good Coffee. I also want to show you some of the artwork here. Just look how beautiful that is. A lot of artwork here. Let's walk around a little bit, just show you around the space. Again, I'm being careful not to film certain areas, which makes it feel like it's really nice and hipstery and sort of this open vibe. But just, you know, having security come up to you and say, you can't film this, you can't film this is a little bit just feels a little uh, culty, you know what I mean? This artwork here right behind me, just absolutely beautiful, really, really nice artwork. Some bikes here so to get around this space. It's quite large, it's a huge event space. Oh, this is beautiful. And this is artwork from an artist that 
you've seen some of my other Cambodian videos, my breakfast video, you'll recognize Hio Baye uh, because he's a pretty popular artist here in Cambodia. And you'll recognize this sort of this style because he's been painting all around the city. This is absolutely beautiful. It looks looks great on camera. It looks 3D like it's coming out of the wall. So yeah, beautiful space. It's really nice. And I think we've got some more of his artwork. Another restaurant here. All right, more beautiful artwork. Some more artwork there. Another restaurant back there. Just a, just a really nice space to walk around. It's, it's like I said, beautiful. Very Instagrammable if you're into that kind of thing. A lot of beautiful artwork around here. And another piece of his artwork again. Look at that sort of the 3D look of that. It's coming out the wall. Really beautiful. Another place to eat there. So yeah, that's the area around Feel Good Coffee, around this factory warehouse. Nice place to come and hang out uh, in the middle of the day. Quick tuk tuk ride from most points of the city. But now, now I want to show you a cafe. I am really, really excited to visit. All right, so this is Ministry of Cat, which is a cat rescue and cafe. I've got my ginger berry juice here. Oh yeah, that's like a like a very sweet sort of cherry taste. And on top here, some ginger juice. Now, as you probably have figured out, there are cats all over this cafe. This is kind of hanging out in the middle of the day. They're taking their naps, but they wander around. They're all up for adoption. You can also make donations here to feed some of the cats or to buy them toys or to support the organization. There's a whole wall here with all the cats that have been adopted. And it's a really nice ambiance. It's just really chill, really quiet. There's cats everywhere. They've got a pretty good selection of vegan and vegetarian food, as well as some meat items. So if you want to eat here, it's also good for lunch. The street where this is located is very quiet. There are a lot of cafes around here. So you can wander in and out of the streets during the day. It's really nice, sort of a different vibe. This cafe is open from the morning hours until the early evening hours. So it's not a late night place. It's the kind of place you want to come in during the day and hang out with some of the cats that are just being so cute and so ridiculous and so chill. And so I made a friend. Look at this little guy. Look at Cute. If you like cats, you're gonna love this cafe. If you like coffee, you're gonna love this cafe. And if you want tea, juice, or something refreshing, you're gonna like the ambiance. Pretty chill place to spend part of your afternoon. Hey, can't walk out of there without a smile. All right, on to the next place. Thank you. Our next stop is somewhere I found myself coming back to over and over for the selection of the food, service, and not to mention this amazing curry dish you have to see. All right, so this is one of my favorite places in Phnom Penh. It's called 11-1 Kitchen. It's one of those places that I just keep coming back to because the quality of the food, the selection of the menu is all great. I love this outdoor seating area. It's pretty relaxed during lunchtime. They've also got a great dinner selection as well as breakfast. It's one of those places where you just the food is just kind of great all around, like the quality of the food is good, the ingredients, the, the ambiance, the decoration, all that stuff. So it's the last place that I wanted to show you while I'm here in Phnom Penh. One of my favorite places, the kind of place you can just keep coming back to. Alright, so starting off with one of my favorites here are the spring rolls. I love the spring rolls here. They've got avocado, mango, and those with shrimp or prawn. And they're absolutely amazing. I like the fresh ones. They have these also with uh, fried. The fresh ones are so good. So this one has avocado. It's got carrots, rice noodle, and some lettuce in it. And it comes with this very sweet but spicy sauce. So we just dip that in there. Such a good mix of crunchy but also sweet and soft. And then you get this little tiny bit of spice at the end. And depending on the time of the day you come here, the sauce will be spicier. So toward the evening hours, it gets hotter. I think the chef just maybe has some leftover chili paste and just starts adding more and more red chilies. This is one of the best things to start off with here. Definitely get the spring rolls. I like the avocado ones the best. Mango ones if you want something a little bit sweeter and prawns if you want something a little bit heavier. Now in case you're wondering, most of the places you've seen this video will take cards. Except for the Ministry of Cats, they just take cash only, so make sure that you have some cash with you. The 
cost there for the juice and the meals runs about three to five dollars it's about the amount of money you'll pay there for a place like this this entire meal that you're gonna see is gonna cost you about twelve dollars US all right so with our spring rolls done let's get into this bad boy and this is amok now amok is something that you will hear and see a lot of on the menus here it is a Cambodian staple basically it's referring to this curried sauce here it's not super spicy but it is creamy In this one we have tofu and mushrooms this is a modern take on the ingredients normally eat this with white rice as well so I've got a bowl of white rice and next to it you have some pickled beets pickles is something that you get a lot of pickled food pickled cucumbers and pickled beets especially is a common side that you'll find here in the dishes. All right, so let me try this sauce first. So it's very heavy, not particularly spicy. It doesn't have a lot of spice in it at all. And so one of the misconceptions about Cambodian cuisine you might be having is that it is very spicy. Now to balance out all of the oil and all of the flavor of the curry, well, you should get this with white rice. Put that on your plate and then take this and then mix the curry and the ingredients on top of the white rice. We've got our rice, we've got our curry, we've got our mushroom there. And... Mm. So good like you would expect. It tastes somewhat similar to Thai curry but without the spice. A little bit more creamy as well, a little bit more oil. So in here we've got some cream as well as mushrooms that have been boiled so some boiled mushrooms and fried pieces of tofu I'm gonna get this with pork chicken beef different kinds of ingredients but this curry is gonna be something that you're gonna find in a lot of the foods here a lot of the types of dishes but Cambodian food is kind of hard to pin down there are a lot of noodles a lot of broth a lot of curries it's really a mix of all the different foods you find around this region in Southeast Asia and I think it's really, really underappreciated. I think that's just because it is such a mix of all the regional foods here that it kind of gets lost. It's hard to say what's distinct about Cambodian food because it doesn't have all the heat and the spice that you associate with Thai food. All right, so let's dig into some of these pickles here. It's got a bitter flavor, so it's not as sweet like a cucumber pickle. It's more of that bitter vinegary taste, but if you love pickles, you're really gonna like this. It's not for the faint of heart. Now at the bottom, an ingredient you might recognize, we get down to the bottom here, are these basil leaves. So basil is very common in the food here in Southeast Asia. And you have these leaves to kind of balance out the flavor of the oil, sort of add some freshness, also some crunchiness to what's otherwise a soft dish. You know, you got this soft mushrooms and you got the, the fried tofu, which is soft on the inside, so the basil leaves here balance that out. So one of my favorite things here is the durian ice cream. Now durian is known for its strong stinky feet smell. In fact it's a fruit that has such a strong smell that you can't take it into hotels, that there are fines for taking it into hotels, to the airport. You can't pretty much you're not allowed to go to a lot of places with durian because it is so smelly but even though it has such a strong smell it tastes so nice it's like a really creamy sort of cashew flavor vanilla like if you can think about all those things it tastes really nice I don't really notice the smell nice way to kind of finish off this lunch here at 11 -1 kitchen um yeah Phnom Penh, really good city to eat in. All right, side note, another nice thing I like about 11 -1 Kitchen is they have free Wi-Fi. And so if you need to be on your phone, you need to check some mail or messages. Not a lot of restaurants and cafes here at the moment have Wi-Fi. So it's just a nice perk of being here. So while you're waiting for your meal, maybe you want to just send a few messages and save on your, your data, on your eSIM. There you go, you have free Wi-Fi. So if you come here during the afternoon with your laptop, a lot of people use uh, 11 -1 Kitchen as a cafe. So they sit here, they work on their laptops, get some, you know, do some co-working, maybe catch up on emails, that kind of stuff. So it's a nice place to hang out. We've got this outdoor terrace patio area with a lot of fans blowing. So even though it's hot outside, 
you're in shade, you've got moving air, you've also got ice cream and food and coffee and all kinds of smoothies and drinks also to keep you cool and uh, spend a few hours here. <laughs> Uh, thank you so much. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. So there you have it. Those are some of the best places to eat here in Phnom Penh. In case you're wondering, tips aren't expected. A lot of places will have a service fee in the bill included, but it's always appreciated, so you might want to round up for good service. In case you're wondering how much to tip for meals and services around the world, you can download my app TipFox, which puts all of that information right on your phone. You can also connect with other travelers and download TipFox for iOS or Android, so you are never the stingy one because you know how much to tip for everything around the world. Most of the places, like I mentioned, will take cards or cash is always available. They'll give you a quote in dollars or rails, so you can pay in either currency at most places. And like I mentioned before, a lot of people will say that Pen of Pen doesn't have a good food scene, that the foods here don't have a lot of variety, but my experience has been quite the opposite. So you get a lot of foods that are traditional Cambodian style, Cambodian foods, but then you've got this interesting mix of creative takes on the traditional dishes with the traditional ingredients and just kind of creating something new. It's really interesting. There is a lot of different types of food here, a lot of different creative takes on it and a lot of places to eat and of course get great coffee. So I hope this video helps change your perception on Phnom Penh and if you're coming to the city, give you some ideas of some places to eat, have some coffee and maybe have some drinks. But if you have any questions about anything you've seen in the video, feel free to let me know down in the comments below. And while you're down there, hit the like and subscribe buttons. I'll have new videos for you every week and I'll see you in the next video.